was an elk. So we first started our day by driving to oh Lamar Valley goodness. just to do some more bison sightseeing. And on the way, we also saw a group of people waiting around for a good shot of a dead bison. Uh, supposedly, they saw a wolf coming to eat it, but unfortunately, we did not see anything. And you can see here, everyone's setting up their cameras and all that jazz. Anyways, when we got to Lamar Valley, we just pulled over on the side of the road and we started making some food, which is honestly probably the best thing about the RV for sure. You could just pull over and heat up the stove and really just make whatever you want. It was so great. As you can see here, there's lots of bison crossings. And it's almost impossible not to see any bison in Yellowstone. It's three o'clock. We made it to Mammoth Springs. It's gonna rain a little. We parked pretty far, I think, because it was definitely packed up there. After our sightseeing, we went to Mammoth Springs, and at first I wasn't too fond of going there just because it was super north of Yellowstone, but I promise you, it is worth the drive. The scenery is insane, it's definitely nothing like I've ever seen before. Hills, bridges, curves, waterfalls, it is amazing. It rained a little, and uh, but it's gone now. It was just a cloud. It's very interesting. Some people wear masks and some people don't. If you don't want to go to Mount Springs, I think you should, because there, those are definitely views you probably won't ever see anywhere else. And also on the way to Mammoth Springs, there is a trail called Bunsen Peak. Maybe y'all should check that out. It is a good short hike. Uh, unfortunately, we did not go, but it's definitely high elevation. And the color you see here is mainly because of the limestone. And you know, it's definitely different from your Grand Prismatic with your blue pools, but I feel this has its own unique take on it. The rain waters, rain water seeps into the rocks and then once they reach a certain depth they come back up from boiling magma so they rise back to the surface of the earth and then just the water slowly flows from one basin to another forming terraces you know as seen all over here Mammoth Hot Springs was created 600,000 years ago, which is honestly crazy that we were even able to see stuff like this, you know, all because there's this volcano underneath us. Also around Mammoth Springs, there are gift shops, restaurants, and hotels. You know, very commercialized, but we didn't check out any of that stuff, you know. It almost looked like a little city. You can kind of see up. You know, I need a better camera. Okay, look. Oh, you can see, I oh, know, you can see I'm moving. getting a little chilly. I want a tree. Mm -hmm. 
And towards the end of the day, we went back to West Yellowstone, uh, this the city that we were staying in, and just to check out some of the grocery stores to make some dinner that night. Now this was our third and final day in Yellowstone and we finish it by heading to the Grand Prismatic. Of course if you ever plan to go to any popular locations you definitely want to head there early in the morning or in the evening just to avoid the crowd. Something we did not do, we got there at 12pm and it was very difficult to find parking, especially in an RV. It's difficult driving around an RV in Yellowstone in general just because you have to use gears to slow down and you're going up and down hills and like you can't you, the car is 11 tons <laughs> so your brake is not going to help you you're going to wear out your brake if anything now if you've never been to a geyser the smell is not that great um it smells like sulfur as if you cooked an egg in a microwave i don't know if y'all have done it if you if you've done it now you know Grand Prismatic Spring is the largest geyser in America. It is 160 feet deep and the temperature is 160 degrees. So you definitely would not want to hop into one of those bad boys. And it is 370 feet in diameter. You know, that kind of gives you an idea of just how big it is. Right here, the smell, oof, it was horrible and it was hot. One out of 10, definitely would not recommend. After we got up close and personal to the Grand Prismatic, you can drive about two miles south to another parking lot that will take you to the Ferry Falls Trail, which is the trail for the viewpoint of Grand Prismatic. While we're on the trail of Fairy Falls, I believe we found huckleberries. This is what they're known for up here. If y'all have seen a huckleberry, let me know. I'm not sure if this is a huckleberry. This trail is definitely a must. If you go to Grand Prismatic and don't do this trail, you're missing out. trail on a boardwalk it's a very easy trail with some pretty good views probably takes about 30 minutes to get through it all and it also has a great view of the lake and they call it the thumb because suppose the whole lake is in the shape of a hand but i don't really see it i mean maybe what do y'all think Finally, we did the same thing we did in the morning. Wow. We pulled over to the side of the road and made some dinner. This was definitely Suzanne's idea to head to this spot, which is about two, ten, like 10 miles north from the Geyser Basin. And this was honestly a very nice view. This is a great view of the lake. Thanks, Suzanne. Shout out to Suzanne.
And the next day we head to Grand Teton. <laughs> 